All right, guys. Here is the alternator welder. Y'all have all been asking about me making a video. Sorry about the sun with the diagram of how to wire it up. For starters, I don't know the model of this alternator. The sticker's gone, but it is definitely a Lease Neville. And I'll put the name of the alternator in the description. But from what I was told years ago, the guy that gave this thing to me, he explained how this thing works. And this is basically all your voltage regulator in here. It has two bolts that hold it on. You pull this off and you just cut all them wires in there. Just cut them. You're not going to need them anymore. This, all this is now is it acts as a dust cover. And there's the other bolt for it. So what you'll do is you'll use these two wires that take care of the brushes on there. So it kind of acts like an actual big welder. You know, it has armature and has a set of brushes. Now these two wires, we'll get to them in a second. It does not matter how they are hooked up. It doesn't matter. On the case of the alternator, it's got a negative out and a positive out. I always hook them up that way but they can also be switched and it'll still weld. It doesn't matter. It's not important. Now, this is the important part and it's not super, super important. You gotta get on eBay or Amazon or whatever and get you one of these rheostats. And I don't know why I didn't think of it, but I would suggest getting one that goes to a welder that you can actually adjust. Cause this is what adjusts your amperage for welding. Now, inside of here, there's a number of diodes. That's what welds are not, that's what makes it weld or not weld. Because I used this thing for about a year and a half or so, welding full time. I, you know, I used it eight hours a day, welding fences, welding buildings, and those diodes finally went out. How long they've been in there, I don't know, because this thing could have been on a truck and had a million miles on it or 500,000 miles on it and then I go, go to welding with it. So I'm assuming these diodes are gonna last a long time and they're relatively inexpensive to replace. I think to have them done, it was like 150 bucks. So we've got these wires taken care of as to where they're located on here. We got these taken care of as to where they're located. Now, where these two wires are gonna go is through this rheostat. So I'm gonna set this down and I'll hook it up. So there you go. Got a wire coming into the rheostat and a wire coming out. And then this wire just comes out. And the reason it has a bolt on it, that'll hook to your battery. And again, this is gonna sound crazy, positive or negative, it doesn't matter. This one hooks to the other post on the battery, positive or negative, it doesn't matter. You just gotta have one on one side of the battery and one on the other. That's it. Now, this is not the correct ohm meter or whatever, potentiometer, whatever you wanna call it. It has some adjustment in the welding, but not a lot. And that's why I think if you was actually to order one for, say, one of those little Lincoln welding powers, you could probably adjust your amperage a lot. Because this, I was told it was a 270 amp alternator, but it's, I don't think it is. I believe it's only 200 amp. You can get them 100 amp, 90 amp, 180 amp, 200 amp. And I think they do have a 270 amp one or 260 amp. So... That takes care of everything to make it weld. And of course, on your leads, you have your stinger and your ground clamp. Now, this has, I believe that's a three and a half inch pulley. And to weld optimally, what I had running this was a 13 horse Honda with electric start. And I believe I had an eight inch pulley on the alternator. And you gotta have it tight. If it's not super tight, when you go to weld, it'll actually slip and obviously quit welding. But 
if you'll look at one of my other videos i actually ran this with a like a six horse honda and it actually welded with it it just didn't weld with a lot of amperage because i didn't have this thing wound up like it needed to be now the reason for the battery is you have to excite it to make it weld so the whole time you're welding it is drawing the battery down but i put like a standard car battery on this thing and i could weld for about six hours off and on the entire day sometimes eight hour day depending on how much i was actually using this <clears throat> ideally you could put this on an engine and either have another alternator mounted like a one wire to keep the battery hot all the time or just like i thought about doing with this little diesel engine i think that's 26 horsepower it has its own alternator and electric start so i could basically have this thing all wired up like it's supposed to be through the ignition switch where when the engine diesel's running it's charging and i could literally mount that alternator over here on a bracket running off that pulley and i'd have pretty much a little a welder i could run all day and with the alternator keeping the battery hot you could continue to weld so there it is guys if you have any questions I mean, I really hate to just draw up a diagram because it's kind of crazy when you say, well, you could hook this up either way, that up either way, but that's the honest to God truth. It doesn't really matter. The only thing I did notice when I had this, and this is the exact one I welded with, per, you know, full time for a living, was it didn't have a lot of adjustment. It was either all the way off. You could kind of adjust it. I think the lowest it went down to was still like 60 or 80 amp and then it was full blown whatever 200 amp so i think if you got one of these off of ebay for one of those little lincoln welding powers you'd have your full adjustment from like zero to whatever them are is like 140 amp machines let's just look on ebay real quick And I don't think that's what they're actually called, but yep, I guess it is. Now here's one for SA200-250. That would work even, I think. And where you see these two posts, you can run it on either one of them. You got to use the center one and one of the outside ones now if you use this outside one when you turn it this way that's all the way down or all the way up if you use this one it just switches the sides like this is all the way down if you use these two this one's all the way this way is all the way down if you use those two but you can see you know they run about a hundred bucks you can actually get them cheaper if you don't look up a Lincoln you know just like this one here where did I see that okay 64 ohm 150 watt 64 ohm 150 watt just Google or get on Amazon and get a 64 ohm 150 watt rheostat and you can probably get it cheaper you just get some off-brand it's gonna do the same thing Now, let's see what this one actually fits. See, now that fits a 110 volt or a 220 volt welder. It's 110 bucks. And I believe this was a 1 ohm 150 watt. So, it's kind of, it's trial and error. I don't know what... And the guy that I got this from never told me. And, of course, there's no info on these on the Internet because it's completely homemade. All I know is Lisa Neville is the one you want because you literally, it's already got the positive and negative post, and you cut all these wires off and don't use them. So, with that being said, guys, my battery is fixing to run down. I hope you all enjoyed the video. If you have any questions, leave a comment, like, share, subscribe, and go check out my other videos for more stuff. Thanks for watching.